So when the scammer uses the hypnotic method of building rapport, then they create the atmosphere in which they begin to create a dysfunctional, delusional reality. So you want to, so you want to become a con artist. Before you set up your first grift, you need to check your toolbox to make sure you're not a Phillips in a world of flathead screws. We've chosen four steps needed to pull off a con, and you need to know them well. First off, you need a story to tell. Then you need a sucker who will believe it. Then build trust to reinforce the tale. Then take the money and beat feet out of town. But before we get into all that, I'm going to give you the Ten Commandments of a con created by none other than Victor Lustig, the man who sold the eye. Here we go. Be a patient listener. It's this, not fast talking, that gets a con man his coos. Never look bored. Wait for the other person to reveal any political opinions, then agree with them. Let the other person reveal religious views, then have the same views, then have the same ones. Hint at sex talk, but don't follow it up unless the other person shows a strong interest. Never discuss illness unless some special concern is shown. Never pry into a person's personal circumstances. They'll tell you all about them eventually. Never boast. Just let your importance be quietly obvious. Never be untidy. And never get drunk. Let's begin our exploration. The first requirement is having a tale to tell. This is the reason for you and the sucker to cross paths. Make people stand up under questioning. You won't pour them out all at once, but being able to answer questions puts the mark at ease. So, what's a good story to tell? You can tell some friendly looking person in a parking lot that your car ran out of gas and you need a few gallons to get home. Can you help? Here's another good one. You come back to the parking garage to find a ticket on your car's windshield. It says you've been parked in an illegal location. You're pissed and you go to the parking lot manager who says she has nothing to do with the fines. They're written by somebody else. She suggests you call the phone number on the ticket. You call, you're asked for a ticket number, and are told the fine is. Now you're really pissed and are told to read the fine print on the ticket. It says that under city ordinance, that the garage owner under contract with the city has the authority to turn the ticket over to the city attorney for prosecution if the fine is not paid within 48 hours. After that, the fine increases by 5% a day. For your convenience, you can go to this website and pay with your credit card. You know the system has you, so you opt to pay the money and get it over with. And just like that, you've turned over your credit card information to scammers. They'll likely charge you the $125 and you won't blarmed. But after 30 days, when the new billing cycle is started, your card will get a real workout. Now those are nice little cons, but if you want the big money, you have to run an investment scam. Give people a chance to own part of an oil well, real estate, or an opportunity to get in on the coming demand for gold. It's all guaranteed. The only thing needed is investors. The only thing needed is investors. Enter a trusted friend. Let's give him a name, say Jerome Barry, just to pick a name out of the air. He's been around town for a while. People know him and like him. They trust him. So when he approaches his friends saying that he's retired and going to invest in real estate, would they like to come? Well, of course they would. And Barry emptied the bank accounts of a lot of people who thought he was trustworthy. Fred Ediscuti's father was taken in by the scam, and he told New Mexico investigators that he couldn't believe it. Dad did know him. Uh, he was a co-worker at the lab, a worker 
at the lab talking to Beery. They were close, close friends. I found out, I guess probably a year after my father started investing with uh, Mr. Beery that uh, he was making an investment. He was quote unquote good at what he was doing. He knew when to buy and when to sell and was doing very well and was able to pay him 24%. And it was kind of like, you gotta be kidding me. I mean, 2010, this is the time frame. I mean, what was going on in the financial markets then? Who makes 24% anywhere? Uh, you know, if, if, if you could find somebody that would make 6% and easily well, yet here Beery is paying 24%, huge flag. How dad would fall for something like this is just mind boggling. And so now he'd invested $20,000 at 24%. They sold their house because they were living in assisted living. And uh, uh, they then, quote unquote, gave Barry another 30000 Barry another 30000 Up to $50,000 now. Uh, Jerry disappeared. He never has talked to this day. Never talked to him. my father for the rest of his life. And to this day, has never talked to my mother. No restitution. Uh, when, 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 when mom and dad gave Jerry the letter, uh, we want our money back, that was the end of any payments. I do a little investigation on this guy. This was a simple Google search. I mean, you know, from 1976 when he had his uh, Chapter 7 bankruptcy, Evan was just full of various court cases. And, and what's even worse is, is that, you know, I, I gather all this information on Barry, none of it good, all detrimental, and take it to dad, and it's like I smacked him with a ton of bricks. Barry was accused in a civil suit of taking about $170,000, $70,000 from his friends. Congratulations. You've taken the first step towards succeeding as a con artist. Next, you need to find a sucker to listen to and believe the tale. Finding a small con, your best resource is other con artists. They just love to exchange lists of suckers who fall for scams and what tales they were told. Sally Greenberg, who's executive director of the National Consumers League, told CBS... It's called a sucker's list. They make billions of dollars scamming, dollars scamming consumers around the world, and they trade information. The fraudster will call the previous victim and say, I know you lost $10,000. For a mere $1,000, we're going to help you get all that money back. And that should be a red flag. Another great resource is other prisoners. If you have that opportunity, it means you screwed up. You may as well learn a skill or get better at your chosen profession. Public records can be sucker lists. Bankruptcies, divorces, obituaries all offer up people who are ripe for exploitation. Now you have a sucker and a great story to tell. It's time to build trust. Art Maines is a clinical social worker working primarily with older people to help them avoid scams, inspires trust. You know, we all have, or we're supposed to have anyway, a kind of natural wariness around strangers where we might be open to meeting them and be friendly to them, but we're not going to divulge anything of real consequence until we get to know this person. So when the scammer uses the hypnotic method of building, uses the hypnotic method of building rapport, then they create the atmosphere in which they begin to create a dysfunctional, delusional reality that they create to reel the person in. That was Maine's on the podcast Scamapalooza. You'll find a link to Maine's book and other fun things in the show notes. Once you have the sucker's trust, you have the keys to the kingdom. There is a story in the news here in in the U.S. Midwest, here in St. Louis, actually, about a church pastor who ripped off members of his flock and other elders and other elders for several million dollars again because of the relationship ties, all of the levers of no like and trust that the scammer used to get people to part with their life savings in many cases. So yes, you can con an honest man. In fact, he may be even more suspect. He may be even more.
more susceptible than someone who is maybe a little bit more skeptical about things. Right now, things are looking good for you. You've told the tale to the right mark, who's then ready to turn over the money. Now it's time to bring in the money mules. There's a town in Romania where they have the most union office in the entire world. So there's a ton of, of scam money that's coming into this little town in Romania um, because that's the local business. That's what people do. So it's all over Central and Eastern Europe. It's all over Asia, the Caribbean Basin, Canada even. I mean, it's, it's a, a worldwide uh, network. Nick Christian of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation adds his take. It's more difficult than you think to move money outside of the country because banks are built to watch out for that and protect from that. So the money mules are someone that's either a romance scam victim or some other victim of some scam uh, that are moving money for them. Gift cards are popular. The scammer sends the sucker out to buy a gift card and load it with the amount of money to be transferred. The scammer then has the sucker recite the card numbers and the cash is in their account at the speed of light. Well, almost. Those are the tools of the trade, but use them carefully because any of them can be the one that leaves you screwed. People get taken by a scam or con because they want to believe they can become richer, smarter, or more attractive to a partner. But because they were the mark, they never realized they were being scammed. They never saw it coming. They never saw it coming. What you can believe in is that a new episode of Scams and Cons is coming in two weeks. Thanks for listening.